Alright, what is good fishing fam? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I wanted to talk about what you want in a worm rod. And what you want in a worm rod is totally different from what you want in a jerk bait rod or a crank bait rod or, you know, or maybe a moving bait rod. And you could probably use this rod for a moving bait too. But it's also very similar to a jig rod or a, a, a frog rod or a flipping and pitching rod. Or punching rod, you name it. It's good for those. He it, th this falls into the category of powerful hook sets, and I'll tell you why here in a second. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Turn on notifications so you never miss another post. Let's get started with it. Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk about length. Because length is probably one of the most important factors. I think every factor is important in this. Every factor is really going to affect how many fish you uh, catch or hook or land. But I really want to talk about length. So if you are someone that likes to flip or pitch or just cast by, you know, big brush piles or lighter um, grass and cover and stuff like that or the bass are hanging around all year round or at least most of the time um you want a shorter rod you do not want a 7.6 or 7.11 rod you want I would say the minimum you want to go is probably 6.6 six, but 7 foot is probably the best rod like this is a Lucas Mach 2 7 foot um it's a pretty simple uh, setup it's pretty expensive as well. It's about 200 bucks for the combo. I'm a 15 year old kid, so um, it's kind of expensive for me. When people talk about a warm rod, I always think 7 to 7.6 seven, medium heavy. And the reason for medium heavy power is you want a powerful hook set. Like I said, this is similar to a jig rod or a frog rod or a um, punching or flipping rod. You want a you know, you don't want a huge, I would say if you're going to bomb that thing out there and cast like 30 yards or 40 yards and you're trying to set the hook in super deep water, you probably want a 7.6, 7.11 rod because it's just going to give you way better leverage to keep that fish pinned in the deeper water. But if you're just target casting, you know, 20, 30 feet away from you and you're just pitching it over there and you're just trying to make a very uh, slim presentation, then a 7 foot rod is the best thing for that. I would go minimum. short if you are like really trying to target cast and really trying to only hit certain spots a six foot rod might even do a little bit better for you but my favorite is just seven foot i can bomb that thing out there a little bit more if i want to fish in deeper water but i can also target cast with it if i want to now the power in action i kind of already talked about the power but i like a medium heavy power um and a fast action rod and what that allows it to do is first of all if you don't know anything about power and action they are two totally different things Action is how much that tip bends before it hits the action or the the backbone, and the power is the resistance against that action. So my rod it shuts off right about there, right right where it stops bending. That's about where it shuts off, about quarter to a quarter and a half to the bike. Now when I set the hook on a fish, it can bend a little bit more on bigger or or it can bend less or more on smaller or bigger fish. But that's about the average it's going to bend before it starts to get to the point where it could possibly break. And the reason for that is, I if I'm, maybe I, I'm pitching towards heavy cover and maybe I get right on a stick or get the hook right in between some sticks and I think it's a fish or something stupid like that. And I set the hook really hard and maybe the rod snaps if I'm using a medium rod, medium action rod. I really need that and another thing about that is... You can use a medium action rod for this, or a medium power rod, but it's going to be a whole lot more difficult. The great thing about a medium power rod for worms, or any lure, is that it can, the fish can load up a lot better on it. With a worm rod, you're looking for like the most sensitive combo you can get, because there's not really going to be a whole lot of room for loading unless you're using a moderate tip. Um, it's just kind of feel that bite, set the hook. Um, that's really all there is to a worm rod. Um, and the fast tip, like I said, it... It's called fast because if you bend it down and do that, it returns the straight very fast when you bend it. So maybe you set the hook, that rod gives because you're obviously setting the hook, 
and you're pulling a fish away, and then it's just gonna return. It's gonna go back to straight very quick, um, and that's what you want a worm rod. You want a rod that can winch fish out of cover really quick before it gets you wrapped around and stuff. Now, if you're gonna flip big hydrilla mats and milfoil and crazy high speed mats like they have in Florida and Texas and all those other uh, southern states, this is not the rod for you. You want like a seven six to eight foot heavy or even extra heavy power rods you're really using in thick cover and you want like 65 or 80 pound braid this is not the setup i'm talking about for that this is not a flipping and punching pitching situation this is more i mean it is a pitching situation but it's more of your just you know heavier duty worm rods i live in connecticut so um it i don't really have a lot of uh, heavy cover per se that i can flip into so I don't need a big, big rod. I, I can get away with almost all my scenarios with a seven foot or seven or six six rod. I can, I most of the time I can get away with a six foot rod because um, I, I just don't really need a longer rod because I'm not necessarily trying to bomb that thing out there. A lot of times the fish are just hanging around cover here in DT. That's just how it works. In fact, most of the year they're just hanging around cover. It, you, it's hard to catch them in the middle of the water. Most of the time, you're not. Most of the time, they're going to be sitting on the bank or by cover. That's how I catch most of my fish, believe it or not. Um, another thing you want a worm rod, and this is more geared, uh, geared toward the reel, um, but you want a fast reel. And I'm not talking about an 8-1 to 1 or 8-5 to 1 or, or any bigger. I mean, if you're flipping and punching into seriously heavy cover, and you got your big heavy action rod, you, yes, you want an 8-1 to 1 key ratio reel so that you can turn that fish around get him out of cover quick even then like I, I just watched the scott martin video i'll go ahead and link it below it's by Dugan labs um and he he could barely get it out with a heavy power rod he his rod was bending like crazy or, i wouldn't say like crazy but it was bending a lot and he was still struggling to get it out i can't imagine trying to get that out with a medium heavy he was i mean he was fishing in super thick cover that we don't have here but um he was still fishing in he was even fishing a big heavy action rod and it was still difficult to get that fish out so what if, if there's one thing I really want you to take away from this video is that you don't need a heavy power rod for a worm what you want is a rod that has a little bit of flex with that tip you don't want like an extra fast an extra fast is a bit much you want a fast or maybe moderate fast tip you want a little bit of give so that that fish can load it had bit not you don't want it to load a lot but you want it to be able to load a little bit so you can feel the bite if maybe you don't if you're reeling down maybe and you don't necessarily initially feel the bite when you lift up um a loading re loading can really help with that but you also want a strong backbone and again i'm not talking about an extra heavy or heavy power rod i'm talking about just a medium heavy probably the most simple setup out there it is really really hard to not find a seven foot medium heavy that's like the most popular rod power length and action there is out there and to get, to, I kind of stray away from the gear ratio, but I like a 7.5 to 1 gear ratio reel or a 7 1 to 1. You can get away with a 6 1 to 1 or a 6 6 to 1, but it's a little bit more difficult to get fish out of heavy cover, I found. It takes me longer to reel a fish in, and I can lose fish off of that, but most of the time you're not. Most of the time you can get away with a, a slower gear ratio reel, just not a 5 1 to 1. That is going to be really difficult. A lot of times I like a longer handle for worm rods. Um, I don't love a super short handle. This is not short. This is a nice long handle. It's not as long as you want for like a flipping and pigeon stick or a flipping and punching stick. But it is long enough to where I can get fish out of there. If maybe I don't have time to put it under my armpit, I can leverage it up against my abdomen and keep that fish pinned and get them out of cover like that. But um, I just like a longer rod. That's all there is to it. Uh, I don't know if I said it already, but this is the Loose Mach 2 SLP Speed Spool. It's an awesome combo for worms and jig fishing, lighter jigs, not uh, ounce jigs and more, just lighter jigs, you know, I really only threw like up to three quarters of an ounce uh, jigs on this, but that's pretty much it for this video, um, I don't really have anything else to say, oh, I, I guess I do have to go over the line real quick, for line, I don't like super heavy line when I'm um, worm fishing because a lot of times I have a pretty light worm on there and I'm not bombing that thing out there, setting the hook out in like 20 feet of water and casting like 60 yards out there i don't need super strong line i like anywhere from 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon 10 pound is kind of pushing it that's that's light line you, you're probably not going to get away with that you could probably get away with 12 pound this is 12 pound vanish berkeley fluorocarbon or berkeley vanish not the most powerful line of all time but it does 
work when you need it to. If you're going to fish in a little bit heavier cover, a little bit heavier brush scenarios like that, you might want 15 or even up to 20 pound. If you're, I wouldn't go up to 20 pound. I'd go to up to 17 because 20 pounds are really thick and hard to cast, and you really can't cast it. You've got to pitch it more. I know people. Some people use 25 pound fluorocarbon. I can't imagine trying to use that. I probably will someday, but yeah. And this rod's only rated for up to 20 pound fluorocarbon. This tells me this is not a big heavy duty rod. This is just made for my worms, my bigger moving baits, smaller jigs, smaller topwater frogs, small topwater baits in general, and just, it's made for, I, I want to say it's made for heavy duty lures, but it's just made for what, whatever you got. You can use this for crankbaits, but it's going to be really difficult when you don't have that flex in the rod, when you don't have that, when you don't have that parabolic bend, it's going to be hard to get fish in the boat, because they can throw treble hook lures really easy. But however, when you have a warm rod and you have it Texas rigged or wacky rigged or Carolina rigged, you got a big old driving hook. You, you can't, you don't get, a, you can't just, you know, crank it and just get a fish and lean into it. You gotta drive that hook in. Um, that is it for this video, guys. Feel free to comment down below what kind of uh, videos you want to see on maybe rods, reels, or line or lures, anything that's similar to this. Like maybe you want to see like what's the best cranking rod or the best. Uh, jerk bait rod or whatever just comment below and i can do my best to help you out but um that is it i mean i don't really have anything else to say um i hope you really if, there, if there's one thing i want you to take away from this video it's that you should have a shorter rod you know seven foot rod maybe six six seven seven three somewhere anywhere between six six and seven three is what i'd say you want medium heavy fast action rod because that way you get the most power um in your rod but, um, yeah, I definitely really recommend this combo. It's a really great combo. It has 10 ball bearings, so it's a super nice reel. Um, you can get fish out of really good places. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Give me some elbow. And also, before I end this video, if you are a small bait company, or I don't really care, a bait company in general, or a rod company, or reel company, or line company, and you have a product you would like me to review on my channel, hit me up. My email or contact information will be in my bio. It'll also be linked in the description box down below. Just email me at outdoorjack123 at gmail.com and we'll figure something out. Um, and, uh, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you, actually, I'm pretty sure you didn't, but, you know, hopefully you did. And I would love to review your products if you have any. You don't even have to be a bait company. You could just be a company that sells hats or shirts or whatever. You can email me there and I will review your products um, as long as you can send me them for a good discount or even free. Thanks for watching.